You've clicked on this video because you read the title of the video. So let's dive in with the answer completely in the first seconds. Is Instagram dead for photographers, painters and visual artists alike? Yes, it is. You're not gonna become famous anymore on that platform because your photographs are so amazing. And it will be that for a long time. It will be that basically forever. Now, is it because of the engagement drop? No, it's not. It has nothing to do with the engagement drop. It has nothing to do with those tactics of social media platforms to push you towards investing in advertisement to grow your social media following, to grow your community. Community, you know, it has nothing to do with that. It has it has something to do with stuff that has been coming for a very long time that we have been seeing and expecting for a very long time in terms of regulations, etc because social media has been very good for too long and something needed to happen. And we will be covering that in this video. Now, you've probably also heard about selling art on Instagram and how good that is. And you've, you've asked yourself that question, how to sell art on Instagram? And, and the question then of course arises, is that still possible? The answer is yes, that is still possible, but it will not be through the traditional tactics that have been explained in, in on YouTube and blogs and stuff like that, like growing your community, growing your following, and then automatically just because you post something, um, selling stuff on your Etsy shop, stuff like that, that will be much, much harder. And, and, and you should actually not really do that anyway. There are much better approaches to selling art online than just posting, hey, this is for sale on your Instagram page. So yeah. Let's dive in with some facts. First, let's go to instagrampress.com and, and look at their press release, their latest press release of which algorithm changes they will be planting in Instagram. No, that's not really English. Like they will be using, changing algorithms, Instagram. Um, <laughs> and, and we can read what they have to tell and what they will be doing. And then it, it becomes actually already very, very clear. So let's do that first. So we have some facts straight. So what does Instagram want? What does a social media platform want? Of course they want trust. Trust is essential in the game of sales, in the game of communication, in the game of building um, or interacting, connecting people. Trust is essential. Instagram knows that and so they want our limbic system to be activated. They want our central part of our brain from a neuroscientific point of view be activated and emotionally trust them. And they want our neocortex to be able to justify with rational arguments why we should trust them. And so they, they are giving that to us, you know, they are giving those arguments so that we, our limbic system, uh, that, that central part of the brain, that, that part of that is, is responsible for emotional processing, that is responsible for decision making, to, to trust them. And we can see that in this article, the first sentence, the first sentence clearly states, let me check that for a moment, we want you to trust what you see on Instagram. We want you to trust what you see on Instagram. That's their first sentence. If you want to know why the first sentence, the first section is so important from a psychological perspective in your communication, check out my video, Grant Writing for Artists, How to Win a Call for Artists. We're talking about remembering self via the experiencing self. They are very important now. So, so that's what they are doing. They are, they are entering that, that, that message with, we want you to trust what you see. And so how are they doing that? They are doing that with third party regulations, with, with AI technology that can scan for particular content that is fake. That is according to Instagram and society at this moment, fake, you know, fake news. You know, there's, there's a whole debate around fake news and what to do about it. And so Instagram has their solution. An AI that checks whether or not the content is fake. And then third party regulations that will decide once the content is flagged, whether or not it is fake and it should be deleted. And so as a result, what happens? As a result, what happens is that photoshopped content, photoshopped content gets deleted. 
things that are not representational to reality gets deleted. If a painter paints mountains in a particular color that is not a depiction of reality and is actually a deception, is fake news, it will be deleted. If, and I could go on and on and on with this list, till the point that you realize that the platform that has been created by culture, namely photographers, all the way in the beginning, they, they spread the word of Instagram, is now, that that platform is probably now abandoning um, uh, photographers altogether, or at least a particular part of photographers. And so basically this means that social media marketing for artists will become much harder. If your content that you're producing is to some extent deceptive, is to some extent photoshopped, and painting basically is real-life Photoshop, then your content will be removed. Not just removed, but you will probably and potentially be shadow banned. I know artists that if I search them on the search bar, that they don't come up. They don't come up. I can't search them. And if I go in my following, the, the people that I follow, because I know I follow them, then I can see them and I can click on them and I can see their profile. But if I put it in search, I can't find them. And so, so a lot of artists are being shadow banned, have already been shadow banned, will be shadow banned in the future, which means that they will not be coming up in search they will not be coming up in suggested or in the main page. The the um, what's 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 that called again on Instagram? Like the, the 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 just the main page that everybody has access to, you know. And and it will not come up in the hashtag searches. And so basically, your organic reach has been dropped down to zero in that scenario. And what can you do against that? Not really anything, you know? Like, you, you can address it to Instagram, but Instagram will not really say anything about it. They will not help you out, you know? There's no help in that space. Now, you might say that this already happened a year ago, two years ago, to some extent that is true. There are social media, or there are artists known that have... Um, there's, there's one artist, for example, where she uh, posted some nude pictures with, like, a leaf... On, on the on on her breasts I, I don't I don't know if it was a picture of her or somebody else whatever so an, 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 art, an, an artistic picture and her profile got deleted I'm not sure when it was like 2018 perhaps beginning 2019 I don't really, really remember but her whole profile got deleted and so why because of nudity is that fair no it's not fair you know, there are some celebrities who are showing a lot of nudity and on Instagram and their profile gets not removed. So is that fair? No, of course it's not fair. And this deception thing, of course, like there's so much to, to tell about. For example, an advertisement, an advertisement that that promises you to lose weight or help you lose weight. If you take these bills, that's deception, you know, like that's of course that's deception. Is Instagram making money on those ads? Yes. Will they therefore remove it? No, of course not. You know, that's how the world works. And so complaining about that doesn't really solve anything. But so those artists or artists have been shadow banned in the past and have been blocked and have been, their profiles have been deleted in the past. But now, and that was, yeah, that was in those days, censorship towards nudity. Now it becomes much more aggressive to some extent. Now it's censorship to everything that is deceptive, that is to some extent fake, and that, and that is just not, yeah, and, and also nudity and all of those other things. And so, so basically the, the, the constraints towards artists producing art and sharing it on those platforms is, 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 is very limited. And some of those examples are rather extreme. You know, at some point there was, I think, I don't know when, like a couple of years ago, the Venus of Willendorf, a 30,000 year old sculpture that shows some nudity, but it's not realistic at all, <laughs> was removed from Facebook. And so, so this, this, this deleting, removing that has been going on for a while, but now it just uh, gets a new level. You know, it gets a new level. And there, there are pictures that are 
actually barely edited that are being removed um, from Instagram as we speak. There's one image of a mountain with a lot of colors on the mountain. You know, a lot of colors. It's not realistic. No, it's not a realistic mountain. And it gets banned. It gets deleted. You know, this is an artistic expression. There's nothing more to it. This is not even really photoshopped. It's just changing saturation rates of particular parts of the image. This, this is more Lightroom work than Photoshop work and it gets deleted. Now, can I understand it from some perspective? Yes. You know, this is not my opinion. It's not necessarily against this. I don't care personally. I personally don't care because I use different tactics to sell my art. My art sales is not predicated on likes. It's not predicated on the amount of followers on my Instagram page. You know, I, I, I personally don't really care about that. And, and, and I would actually recommend that you shouldn't either. There are other ways. And so this is not an opinion. You know, can I, can I understand the perspective of Instagram? Yes, to some extent I can. I remember um, a while back I was doing an art residency in Argentina. And... And so I had did a residency there for a month. I had an exhibition there and in Buenos Aires it was pretty cool. And then I traveled a bit, a bit, you know, I wanted to see Argentina. And so, so, and, and one of the travel or travel destinations was also like a mountain with colors. And on the internet, it looked like a mountain with colors, you know, like a colorful mountain because of all the sedimentation layers, whatever. I'm kind of into science. So I wanted to check that out. And on the internet, it looked pretty fucking cool. It looked like, like a mountain full of colors. And of course I thought like, yeah, these images are probably a little bit edited and it's not going to be this realistic. And when I arrived, I did have two emotions. One was, wow, this is amazing. This is sedimentation. This is just, this is beautiful. And the other one was, yeah, this mountain is not that crazy. Actually, I'm a little bit disappointed. I, I was expecting more. And so those two emotions were, were part of me. And to some extent, you could say that. There is marketing opportunity if you let photographers edit your nature landscapes and a lot of other stuff about your city or your district and then massively produce that on Instagram. You could spike the tourism in that district and people would be coming there for a particular reason and then would be to some extent disappointed because of what they saw in it. Like there were some, some arguments that you could make against that. And so it is understandable. Is it going too far? Probably. Or perhaps and so so yeah this this is just an important thing to realize before you put a lot of time and effort in Instagram that might be not the best to choose of your time and so is Instagram that for artists arguably is your organic reach that yes and if it's not that now it might be that at any given moment and so be careful with that. Now is selling art online therefore that no? Is selling her art on Instagram therefore that no? Can you still be using that platform? Yes. Is it good to use that platform? Yes. Are they still providing a lot of value to artists with or without, without organic reach? Yes. You can contact basically anybody, show them their, your, your work immediately for free. Like that's, that's an amazing opportunity. And so, so when thinking about how to sell art online, instead of thinking about social media marketing for artists, think about how to sell art on Instagram, then we have to go towards a different process, a different Instagram process that, that is much more drenched in the foundations of selling art, the, the foundations that were already true 50 years ago before Instagram existed. And using those basic principles will, will actually have a chance to, um, or, or will probably be the smartest tactic you can use at this moment. And so for people who want to do that, I would check out my video, how to sell art on Instagram, a video that is not talking about likes and how to, uh, um, post on a regular basis and consistency and all of that fucking stuff. Um, but this is teaching you the basics of sales how to actually sell on Instagram. And so I would recommend that video. And for the rest, I'm an artist, I'm Dries Kedels. That's my name. As you already know, it's 
on the thing on on YouTube, you know. And I hope to see you around. Perhaps you should sub 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 subscribe for that, you know, and ring the bell. Otherwise, you're not gonna really get this content. And perhaps comment, and perhaps like as well, and all of that stuff because this channel is made for you in the end. You know, it's helping you out, building an art career, building an art business. See you around. Ciao, ciao.